Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. This is going to be a little DIY video. Sorry, I've been missing in action in a while. Uh, just been busy with projects and experimenting. So this video, as you can tell, it's going to be about another DIY pool video. Uh, if you have watched my previous video, how to maintain a sustainably, um, you know, natural kind of pool without too much work, uh, please check that out. It's in my DIY um, selection. Uh, so today I want to talk about maintaining a pH. So, sorry for the mess. So we've been using copper and titanium to substitute the chemicals other than uh, muric acid for pH. Um, so it's kind of pain in the butt to deal with it. Got to put the gloves on and all that. So CL Free, the company I use, not sponsored by it, they make a system with the CO2 injection that maintains pH. So that got me thinking, okay, maybe I should go with that. And looking at the price, it's a bit pricey. 4,500 bucks for injecting PS. Of course, they include uh, copper and titanium stuff with it, but that's kind of pricey for me. Um, then I'll start looking at other companies and most there, there's the cheapest one I found was anywhere from $1,400, $1,600. And once I start looking into exactly how the system operated and what it did, uh, it was pretty simple. So I started my own project about a, over a month ago. So what I got going on here, I've been testing it. It's working out great. So all I got was a, a, a regulator. This happened to be Milwaukee. There's a bunch of companies make this regulator. So I got a CO2 regulator with a trigger switch. So it's got a switch um, actuator here that triggers whenever you give it power. So in that case, it plugs into this. And the part two, so literally you can run with this. It's about 80, 90 bucks. Uh, you can put that on a timer, uh, do about 10, 15 pounds of pressure out of the CO2 can and inject that into the water uh, slowly and you're good to go. But I wanted to make it automated so that way I don't have to test the water every day for pH and you know run the timer according to that. So the second portion of this I bought a also Milwaukee, not associated or sponsored by uh, their pH reader. Um, these are for like grow tanks or um, aquariums, things like that. Uh, so they're low pressure. So the the sensors for these, so this little connector right here, it connects to the pH sensor that reads the water pH level. Uh, and the low pressure means you can't run in through a pool pump because uh, of course you have a higher PSI. So what I end up doing to create a low pressure basically here's the sensor and I and this piece right here came with the sensor so this piece comes off this unscrews um, so I already had a three-quarter inch fitting here it was capped off so I drill a hole of the size of the um, cover that I came with because these sensors has to be has to stay wet in order for them to function properly so what I did I cut the bottom of it and I drilled a hole into three quarter inch block here that I had. These are typical threads for your garden hose and things. Um, and then I JV welded that piece here. Um, and it sits right about here. So the sensor's right at this location, which means the water rushing through takes a slight catch here, but it's not a high pressure catch. So this gives me an ideal perfect reading for that because I, when I looked at a high pressure pH sensors they're about 300 bucks a piece and this was my test bed so I didn't want to spend that money to do it and I'm trying to do it as cheaply as possible I'm not trying to be cheap but trying to be resourceful so this already came with it and this works so this basically what it does the pool water comes from the pool here before it hits the pump and I take a reading of pH so at this point it's reading 7.1 on the controller, which is correct because we tested it with our manual kits and it works out. Then it goes through the pump, goes through its, its, its sand filter, goes through the injection, and off of this regulator, which plugs into this piece right here, basically this is a, a, a relay that this controller controls. So anytime, uh, based on if you select above or below pH, whatever pH level you're trying to maintain, most cases is above what you want. Uh, so you have to put acid in. Uh, so I have it set to above, and this is a little dial where you can see exact, exactly what. So in my case, I have it to 7.1. It's, it's clicking right now. I mean, it's running. The red light means it's running, flashing. 
because um, it maintains at seven. So whatever you set it to, it'll maintain. It'll go one point lower and it kicks in one point higher. So in this case, it'll wait till it goes to seven, and then it'll cut off. And then when it goes to seven two again, and then it'll cut, kick back on again. So basically, that controls this outlet right here, which goes to the regulator, and that's the part that controls the air going in and out. So off of that. This tube goes in and right before the water returns back to the pool, it injects here. Same thing, I have a three quarter inch threaded fitting here and I had to have a shark bite and then I connected the pipe into it. The only other thing I did was put a one way check valve so that way no water goes to the CO2 side, but it's just injecting it. Uh, so that's about it. And with this, I've been running over a month, almost two months now, and the pH level been perfect. It's pretty much hands off. One advice I will give if you're gonna build something like that. So this complete cost me about 250 bucks maybe, uh, not including the CO2. Um, uh, one advice, run this during the daytime uh, to keep an eye on it for first, because first couple days I just let it run and I realized the the pressure difference between, you know, you, you're looking at 1500 plus pounds of pressure uh, in a CO2 tank and you're trying to bring it down to 10, 15 pounds and that creates a chilling effect so the regular got frozen a couple times so what I have now or what I do now is it, in the morning I turn it on in the evening before I go to bed I turn it off eventually I'll put it on one of those timers so it'll just kick in you know first thing in the morning and cuts off in the evening because um, that's when you know you it's warmer so it doesn't freeze over um, so that's about it. it so again, uh, just simple regulator cost me 80 90 bucks uh, The the reader was about hundred thirty bucks I believe and then you know this tubing I already had laying around and one way check valve There are a dollar or so a piece at Amazon or any other place again not affiliated by any of these companies I was just testing a way to Make my life and wife's life a little easier maintaining this pool and with the CL free system um, we're really happy 10 12 years running this thing um, we pretty much set the numbers to whatever we want to inject based on how the copper level works out and now with the co2 system uh, that's one more step we don't have to do we don't have to maintain the ph um, and the water is awesome it's bubbly water it, it's really soft it feels like um, you know you're you're swimming in something natural instead of uh, all the chemical smells or anything um, as far as the pool goes, we still have it open. We're in Northeast. Um, it's it's almost time to close as the leaves coming down. It, but I like swimming in cold, cold, chilly pool. Uh, it's good for you. Uh, refreshes you out. But anyway, on that note, please like, subscribe, and share if you're liking these videos. Uh, I'll keep posting my uh, DIY stuff. 